right, hi everyone. How is everyone doing? Um, I will let you guys uh, open up the chat in Zoom because we do have this auto, auto mute upon entry on at the moment in case we have some stragglers who join in a bit late, but I think I'll just get started so we can um, move along. And Marta here is helping let people in from the waiting room unless you have, if you have some friends that you don't see yet in the chat. So welcome everyone to Creative Mornings Lausanne. Please introduce yourself in the chat. You can rename yourself with your name, location, and maybe your Instagram or Twitter handle, whatever you prefer. And yeah, start using the emojis and definitely just feel engaged. So welcome to our virtual version of Creative Mornings Lausanne. Um, since March, we have started hosting Creative Mor Mornings globally, virtually, just to make sure everyone is safe. And at the same time, the great thing is people from different locations outside of Lausanne are also able to join. So there's a bit of a silver lining there. Participation is encouraged. Definitely turn on your cameras if you can. I know it's really early, but yay. <laughs> that was fast. Thank you. Um, so turn on your cameras if you can, you know, be super engaged in the chats. Uh, we have a really friendly community if it's your first time and don't be shy. So make sure that, um, make sure you do have your cameras on if you're able to. If you want, you can, there's also a way to change your screen view um, to speaker view. If at any moment you want to make sure uh, you can see us or our speaker later in the day. Yay, hi, hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Marta's laughing because her husband just joined. Okay. <laughs> and he has a mustache that he drew over a <laughs> Just so you guys don't, we're also very giggly this morning. We don't know why. Um, <laughs> so feel free to rename yourselves, follow your neighbors uh, that you see next to you on the screen. Um, and I will just give everyone a couple minutes to do that. Just in case there are some people who are not so familiar with Zoom, um, because not everyone uses it at work. I'm not someone who uses that work either. I was telling Marta, so I'm not as familiar with all of the functionalities, but there's a feature that we'll be testing right now called raise your hand. So if you go to participants, you can see this little, little blue hand. And if you, if you click it, it raises, if you click it again, it lowers. So let's test this feature. Um, Raise your hand if this is your first Creative Mornings event. Actually, I can't see all the hands, but you can. Uh, right? Again, <laughs> um, there is no one yet either. Ah. Maybe they're looking for the feature. Yes, Valentin from Berne. Oh, yeah, cool. cool, it's working. So welcome <laughs> to your first Creative Mornings event. Raise your hands if you are calling in from Lausanne. Yeah, a lot of uh, most people. I think most people today, yeah. Day. There is a lot of people from Lausanne today. Yay. <laughs> Welcome. And then raise your hand if you are not calling in from Lausanne. And if not, I guess put in the chat where you are calling from because sometimes we have some interesting, interesting locations. So I know Marta already. Even Don. Woo. Your old home. <laughs> Cool. Maybe it's very Swiss this time, but all over. And then uh, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm, I'm American. I don't know if there are other Americans in the call, but raise your hand if you are grateful for something today, whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not. So it's Friday, so I think we can all be a bit happy. <laughs> <laughs> I took today off, so I'm really happy. <laughs> um, cool. So welcome to Creative Mornings. For those who are not as familiar, um, just introduce us. We are a global, um, we are global and we're in over 200 chapters around the world in 67 countries worldwide with 27,000 morning people attending Creative Mornings every month. So our events are always, always free. And that's thanks to our global sponsors at MailChimp and Basecamp. So since we do have, you know, these um, other chapters on the world, the cool, the cool thing about them being virtual is you're able to join other chapters, Creative Mornings as well. So 
feel free to explore the website and see if there are other interesting chapters hosting events that you'd be interested in. In terms of our global sponsors, we have MailChimp. They help us um, enable us with our email marketing and our marketing partner for this month. So MailChimp is actually doing something called um, really exciting called MailChimp & Co. So it's a brand new insider community for freelancers and agencies that support small businesses and their marketing needs. So if this sounds like you, definitely take a look at MailChimp & Co. Um, Basecamp as well, they're our newest global partner and they're a partner for project management. So again, um, if you haven't heard of them in your smaller business, uh, take a look and they're an interesting, interesting um, project management tool that you can start using. And something they're doing is called uh, Shape Up. So if you've ever felt stuck when trying to complete a project, Shape Up is a guide to how Basecamp does product development. And you can check it out at basecamp.com slash shape up. So Creative Mornings Lausanne, we've been around for two and a half. I, I should look this up every time because my sense of time is just gone. But I think it's two and a half years or three almost, actually, um, that we've been around here in Lausanne. So we are usually doing in-person events, but of course, uh, now it's, it's a little bit different, but we're still thankful to have some local sponsors with us um, and a great team. So of course, um, I'm Sophie, I'm your host. And then of course there's Marta. And for those who have been around Creative Mornings, is on, Marta was the original host and she um, was the one who founded the chapter here in Lausanne. Um, now she is, a really great organizer. She knows all the ins and outs of Zooms as well. So that's been really helpful <laughs> uh, for us on the virtual events. We have Elia here, who is our partnerships manager. So um, this time our, our um, partner is Green Gorilla. And usually when we do have in-person events, we do have some like coffee and food and things for you and to enjoy breakfast. So that's everything that Elia helps manage the relationship with. Maria is our graphic designer. Anything you see on um, on social that is local, so uh, not the global global designs, but our local speaker designs, that's all Maria. And she also is now helping us with video editing. So we're going to start putting these up online quite soon. Um, and there's Tiaki who was more active when we were uh, not virtual because uh, he was our videographer and he was super great. So that's our great little team. And now I'd like to uh, hand it over to Elia just to present a bit about Green Gorilla, who is our local sponsor today. Yay, so uh, Green Gorilla is our sponsor for uh, the last online event of the year, the last event of the year. Um, and um, they are based in Lausanne. They also have three other locations in Geneva. They're currently open for takeaway. Um, and so thanks again, Green Gorilla, for sponsoring this event. And also just a quick throwback to the picture that you see in the middle. That's our last in-person event, which we held at Green Gorilla in February. Yeah. Thanks again. Oh, and, and stay tuned for details on how to win vouchers uh, for Green Gorilla later in uh, today's session. Exactly. Pay attention to the talk and you could have a chance to win some vouchers because we aren't able to provide you breakfast uh, today. Great, thanks, Elia. Um, and now I'd like to present to you. So this is our global theme. Um, each each uh, each month we have one chapter choose a global theme. So this month our theme was chosen by San Diego, um, and designed by a graphic artist in San Diego. And Mailchimp is our pre presenting the theme today globally. So here locally for the theme radical. We thought, of course, of Simone Troxler, and I would like to present her here today. So Simone, I'm going to give you the control right now so you can flip through the screens and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm Simone Troxler, and most of the people who know me, they are calling me Simi. So it's my surname. Um, see me because, yes, I'm originally from the German part of Switzerland. And there we always like name people by their surname. So if you introduce you yourself as Simon, they will call you automatically Simi. So you can just say Simi to me. <laughs> 
So I'm um, 24 years old and currently living in Lausanne, where I'm studying uh, medicine uh, in the second year of master. And besides the studies, um, I'm running a lot. So um, most of the time, like marathon distances. And I'm also like member of the Swiss mountain running team. So I'm doing a lot of competition in running besides the studies. Um, so yeah, just like some results. So uh, you know a bit more about me, what I'm doing besides the studies. So um, last year I won a Lausanne Marathon and the Jungfrau Marathon, which is a marathon in the mountains. So you really run like 42 Ks up to a mountain. And other good results are like the third place in Cierzinal. And I did the eighth place at a, at a European Championship in the mountain running. So yeah. And here are two pictures. One is from Lausanne Marathon and the other one like from the European Championship in Zermatt last year. And um, so my life dramatically changed like in summer um, from two years ago, because I'm just, I started running like four years ago when I started the medicine studies. Uh, just for myself and with a group at university. And then two years ago, I started to do races with some friends and I just did good results. And then I thought, yeah, maybe running is really what I like and I wanna pursue other goals. And so, yeah, so it really began like two years ago when the sponsor came to me, when then a, a coach asked me if he can like follow me and just help me with some races. And then I already started like to train uh, more and with a plan and according like really to goals. So before it was more like, okay, let's have some fun and just go to races and yeah. So it worked for, it worked good, but after that, if you really wanna like achieve some goals, then you have really to follow a plan and maybe have a coach. And then it was quite difficult because I had some results and you're just like, okay, it works. So you just think like you're a superhero, you can go like that, you can just like do what you want. But the problem is that then you realize after two years that it's not like that, it's not working. You cannot just run and that's it. And you think that then you realize that you have like to deal with other things that you don't know before. So you just think like you can go for it, things will work like you did it before. So you're just going and that's it. But the problem is that it doesn't work and you're just like, we will come up like with some fatigue and that there are other things to deal with. So then next one, please. Yeah. So you think that with some organization, perseverance and determination, you can do it. So you think, okay, now you have a coach, you just have to show up at the trainings when you're not studying, you have to, to work hard, like this always like the sentence, no pain, no gain, and then it will be fine. So it's just what you're thinking and it's like, okay, I will deal with it. I have a new life, I'm running, I'm studying, and that's it. But it's not that easy. <laughs> So the next one, please. The reality is that then you have like a double life. So there are lots of stress, like you have studies that is stressing, you have exams, and then you also want like to follow goals in running. So there's like a double stress. Then you are doubting because, okay, you had results, but now you have to prove that you are a good runner. And then that comes with a lot of pressure because now people know you. And when you show up at training, you expect to be the fastest woman, for example. So sometimes you're even stressed before a training because like, wow, okay, I wanna show that now I'm fast. 
then you're overthinking things. You're like, okay, I want to be prepared. Maybe I have to do that. Oh no, this. Oh no, now I heard that you have to eat healthy. So what should I eat? What should I do? And then sometimes it's fatigue is coming because when you're not studying, you go for a run, but then you are, you don't have time to rest. You don't have time like to cook anymore. Um, you do not watch TV. Then you always have to choose between training and friends. And like I said, like there are a lot of sponsors coming to you and it's totally new. Like I was like new in the field and they ask you and you're like, okay, wow, just wait guys, I'm not ready for that. Like I'm just running besides my studies. What should I do with that? <laughs> and that is really hard to deal with because like you just started to run to have fun. And then it's like a whole world we didn't know that just, okay, it opens to you. It's like a great opportunity. But you didn't realize what it all that that it will just like change your life and that you have like to adapt yourself and that it's not that easy. And then you also, what I say, like you want to keep that image, that image like of a good runner that always shows up, that is not tired, that, that can deal with everything. But no, like you're just a human being and you're not a machine. And that takes time like to realize. So the next one. So what I'm trying to do now is like really to keep the balance in life, like to deal with everything. And that's why I really like this image because it's like pretty what I'm doing like in life, like you are just cycling. And you just like need to have a bit of everything so that you don't fall. And <laughs> this one is really good, but sometimes like hitting the balance is more <laughs> like that. <laughs> so you have like to do gymnastics and like to deal with everything. And sometimes it just crushes down and you have bad days, you have good days, you go through a lot of emotions, but yeah now like i'm really trying to do that and most of the time now it's working but it took time and i just want to talk a bit more about it what you need maybe like to to deal with everything so the next one so i think the first thing that you really need to have is like to set in goals because then you, you are focused, you, you know what you want. Like if you have a race, you prepare for the race and you train for the, for the race and you don't think, uh, oh, maybe I can do uh, another training or I can do that. And it's also like to put like the confidence in your coach. Like you just have like to follow. Okay, you can, you can say I'm too tired or maybe we can do another training. But it's like to stay focused. I train for that and for nothing else. And I can go when I have time to do it. And so you also know your priorities because you have like to choose, like I said, yeah, sometimes you have to choose between friends and training. And then if you have goals like, okay, that now for now it's my priority. I really choose like training before the friends sometimes. And then when the race is over, I will have more time for friends. So you really have to know what you wanna do at this time. So you stay focused. And so you're not doubting every time um, what you, maybe you wanna do something else or something like that. So for me, that is the first thing you really need to do, like to give some sense in what you're doing. And then it's really important like to know yourself, like your resources. If you think that you are too tired to do a training, okay, not a big deal, you can do it tomorrow. Like the, the world will not change and it's not one training that will change your life and your, your goals. And at the beginning you think, oh no, I have to do it. This training is really important, but no, it's not. Sometimes you have to relativize. And then it's also important to know your strength. So you are confident when you're going like, okay, I know um, I'm good in endurance, but maybe not, um, I don't have the speed, so I have to work on the speed. Or the strength, like, okay, I'm really organized, but sometimes I'm a bit too stressed, so I have to work on that. Or sometimes I'm training too much, so 
Uh, and that really happens. Like sometimes you're training too much and then you go into overtraining. So now I have really to be aware of not doing too much and not running when I'm stressed. And I know that is really a, that is a flow for me. So I know, okay, I'm overtraining, but now I'm trying like really to, to know, okay, no, that is not training when I'm going too much. It's just like to deal with stress. And what is really important is like to search help when you need it. So sometimes we're just like overwhelmed with everything. And then it's important to say, okay, no, now I need some time for me. I need to see my family. I need to talk to friends or when you, when you have a pain, like you don't, you have to go to the doctor or like search for help like by a psychiatrist. There are a lot of sports psychiatrists and they really can help. And sometimes it's really difficult like to do the first step to say, okay, now I just like need a team that helps me that I can go to the goals. I cannot do everything alone. And so, so yeah, what I think is pretty important is just like to have um, those people around you that can help and you can see, okay, mom, I'm feeling bad. Please can I just talk to you? Or it's important, like I said, like to have a coach when you can say, oh, I'm too tired to do this training. Do we really have to do it? Or what do you think? Maybe we can adapt or, so, and he can like help you to achieve your goals. It's important to have a good health so that you have a doctor who is always beside you that can help and do checkups and everything. It's also important like to have time to relax. Like I started sometimes to go to the massage one year ago before I didn't because I was like, okay, I don't need it. But it does good and you need it really like just like to have some time for you then it's also important to have a good nutrition to have all what you need to have uh, enough energy for everything and like i said it's important like to have someone who coaches you mentally to deal with everything with sponsors or before a race or just like in the global life to deal with everything and yeah, that is really what I wanted to say. Like, um, okay, it's great if you think you're badass and you can do everything and you're training hard and no pain, no gain. Um, but I, I think it's just one part of an athlete. And then it's all what is beside and that you really maybe don't see at the first sight when you see a person. But the tour is that elite athletes also are human beings and not just machines that are just running, running, running when they have time, because otherwise, like you would break. Yeah. And so the, the next one, please. So yeah, that's now I'm seeing myself more like that. So I'm trying to keep the balance and I have like those red circles that are attracting me sometimes <laughs> like oh my god I'm so stressed what I what can I do oh no and now it's important like to have the, the green ones that really protect you from that and that you can like go a step uh, bes beside and like to see okay no the world is not so bad I have the people I need and Thanks to them, I can achieve my goals. And I'm not alone in that. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, Simone. So um, before we jump into q and I think we hinted at this a bit. Um, get your chat open because we, uh, we have four vouchers from Green Gorilla that we would love to give, uh, give away to some of you and thank you to Green Gorilla for that. So we have four questions that were answered throughout, throughout the talk today and the first person to answer correctly in the chat will be able to win them. So are you ready? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, first question, which year dramatically changed Simone's life? And I actually can't see the chat from here, so. 2018. Uh, As who was first? Nadine. Nadine was first. Okay, great. We, will, we have your email, so we will look. 
Congrats, Nadine. Second, which two marathons did Simone win? Chaba. People are fast. They're a boss. <laughs> I cannot time that fast. I think I am. Yeah. So we have a winner, right? It's Chaba. Chaba. Perfect. The team's noting it down. Don't worry. <laughs> not just <laughs> getting frustrated. You will get. That's true. We have one. <laughs> Renata, you won like 10 of them. Three. What is Simone studying? So it was a speed round. I feel like this was. Yeah, medicine with Yannick goes first. Oh, nice. We're getting congrats, Yannick. Have three different winners. That's a final question. Um, how many Green Girl locations are there in Switzerland? If you guys are listening, not to our speaker, but so. Yannick again. People are so fast. <laughs> I always think not everyone's going to get Yannick again. Yannick again. Renata's trying really hard. <laughs> so we, have, we, there, we Maybe we have four different ones. And who's Everyone got it. Yannick. Yannick. Is the same Yannick from the before? Yeah. Yes. So the okay. second one is Renata. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Congrats, everyone. Um, so Ellie, do you want to let them know what they want and how they will be hearing from us? Yes. So um, you will get a voucher. Well, actually, you can just show up <laughs> at uh, Ringarilla in Lausanne. They're open from 10.30 to 2 for takeaway. And you get a free coffee and 50% off an acai bowl. Yes. So I think you would probably just show your email or... No, it's just your name. So all four oh, the names. Name. Perfect. Um, and then you just you just show up and spoil yourself. <laughs> yes. Congrats, everyone. So free coffee and I think 50% off acai bowls. Correct. Cool. So now um, I want to make sure we open the floor up to Q&A with Simone. So if you have any questions, please either raise your hand or write it in the chat and we'll make sure to unmute you. Any questions? Thank you. Yes, Renata. Any question. Renata. Hello, Hi. Ladies. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Simi, so much. Um, this is cool. It's very inspiring because um, I think some of the superstars here know that I've been trying to, to start running myself and it's so hard. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I have actually two questions for you. One is exactly uh, relating to that because you did say um, it doesn't take only organization and perseverance. You know, there is all the, the down. And I completely agree because I am organized and persevered and I cannot run. And um, I can only imagine you with your stress. And I wonder where do you go within you to find the strength if you are you know, in the middle of the mountain and you still have 30 kilometers to run? Like, is there some place in you that you go or some thought that pushes forward? And the second thought is uh, when you started to get the um, support when do you get support by yourself in Switzerland is a true curiosity because I know the girls like Isabella, for example, who's also a super athlete. As far as I know, she's an athlete because she supports herself as an athlete and not because Switzerland gives any kind of uh, help. Oh, you just changed. Um, so I wonder what time do you get, for example, to go to the European uh, championship? Do you have a true government support like that or are you just an athlete supporting yourself thank you <laughs> you're welcome so thanks for asking so for the first question yes during a race like you go through everything <laughs> at the beginning at the beginning you're really motivated and then i think always i have like a point it's like one third of the race i'm like oh gosh i cannot do it <laughs> because sometimes we started a bit too fast and like, wow, it's only one third I have, like, and it's not even the half of the race and I'm, I'm already tired. Um, then it's important like to focus, like to really like to go in your own world, like, okay, I came here to do it. If I'm doing it, it's just because I decided it. Nobody told me to do that, it's my decision. So now, okay, you're stuck in this mess, but it's your fault. So now you just finish what you're doing <laughs> and you go up that fucking mountain and then you will be happy. And that's always like I'm telling myself. 
and then it's like then after that it's fine like you you go back you stay focused and then okay just one time like you open the mountain and then it's just amazing the feeling because like you accomplish something and you're just happy <laughs> And uh, then for the second one, um, yes, yeah, so I'm more like an athlete on my own. Um, to go to a European Championship or like to the World Championship, um, Swiss Athletics, which, which is like the federation of the athletics in Switzerland, um, they're like building a teams most of the time, like or four women from Switzerland. So you have to do some races so they can select you. And then there's a little support, like you show up as the group of like the Swiss team. And then you get a little bit of support like to the accommodation for traveling, but otherwise like you're doing it alone. So that's why after a while it's really difficult if you don't have sponsors because you have to pay everything from your own. So Switzerland is not really like supporting you in that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Renata's doorbell rang. Yeah, <laughs> I got okay. very motivated and ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Renata. Um, thanks for your answer. Oh, cool question well, from Olivier. Yes. So <laughs> he says, Cindy, was it also? Um, do you want to? Um, do you want to unmute and ask it yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> But at least the camera's on. So he says, Simi, was it also a radical change for you to select in Romandie as your place of studying? What made you come to Lausanne? I don't think she mentioned it during her talk. No, because, yeah, I, I did mention it, but I moved here when I was three. So my parents didn't ask me if I wanted to move. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Um, <laughs> The, it was, I think they told me it was difficult for me because when I was free, I was really like talking a lot, but I wasn't talking French. And they put, in, they put me like at school and I just talked to everyone, but in Swiss German and they didn't answer me and I couldn't speak French. <laughs> so for one year, I just didn't spoke at all when I was outside the house. I just listened to people and when I felt ready, when I was four years old, I just started like to talk French. <laughs> but I think it was difficult for me because I had no friends and you're just like three years old and you don't know what happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm happy to be here. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? I have, I have yeah, a question. I, like, I'm like, I have a very specific question. Um, so when you're training for a marathon, what does your workload leading up to the race, let's say three, four weeks before, looks like kilometers per week? I'm just curious. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, a, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what is important when you prepare a race is like to do some specific work for the race. So when you're running a marathon, you have like specific marathon session. And you're doing two to three specific sessions. And then um, most of the time we're just doing like recovery footings that are like about one hour, one hour and a half. And sometimes you go like twice a day. So it depends. Um, and then for a marathon, the, I think the load is like 150 to 200 kilometers a week. Yeah, and sometimes a bit more when I'm running in the mountains or when I'm on holidays, I just love like to go for one day just running in the mountains. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a runner myself, so it's really a lot. That's about three times more, I, that's about three times more than what an amateur runner does. <laughs> and Marcia does run a lot. So, <laughs> so I'm sure, yeah, but um, I think my maximum load was six. No, 70 kilometers, I was very proud. <laughs> <laughs> More than me in a year. I guess, um, oh, I see there's another question oh, yeah, for you. Um, Bea, uh, they say, I also have a practical question. I found spring summer training super awesome. You wake up and run by the lake and watch the sunrise, but how do you stay motivated in the winter? It's so dark and cold. It's true, it's terrible. <laughs> 
Yeah, I have to agree that um, the first week when we changed hours, like the first November week, it's horrible. <laughs> and but it's just like maybe the two first week that is like that, and after that you, you get used. So you you just like put one more jacket. And sometimes I think like running in the dark is really relaxing because you don't really see something. So you just like adapt your pace at how you're feeling. So in the morning, sometimes it's really cool because there's no one there. So no dogs, no grandmother with dogs, <laughs> no child. And you can just like, yeah, enjoy a little bit of time before you have university. And it's just like another kind of running. And okay, you have to adapt most of the time, maybe two weeks and after that it, it's okay. And in the evening, um, in winter, um, now I'm going with some friends on the track. So that is much easier because I have to agree that at six in the evening or seven, when you had like, uh, like just like a, a work day and it's dark and maybe you're a bit hungry because it's like evening and you just want to cook and it's cozy inside you don't really want to go in the dark <laughs> but when you know that you're meeting people and that you're going on the track and maybe it will be announced some training then you just go for it and you don't think about it you know okay on wednesday or thursday 6 30 we meet on the track and you go and when you're there then you're happy Okay, sometimes the first five minutes are hard, but when you're there, it's great. And when you come back at nine, you're just super happy because of what you did. And it's also awesome sometimes to go on the track when there's like, uh, the, the city is just dark, the lake is dark and you're on the track and people are just running and encouraging you. And that remakes the day sometimes. And that's what I like. Uh, uh, we also have a question from Kaka. She's asking, do you have an athletic background? When did you start running? And do you have a dream race you want to, to run one day? Um, yeah, so I did gymnastics until I was 18. But it was like not artistic gymnastics. It was like the little one you do as a hobby. Um, and that's it. But I always liked to walk in the mountains in summer but no running at all, I hated it. It was horrible. Like when we had to do like the 12 minute test at school, I thought I was dying. <laughs> it was like, it was, I was just running at, running at this time. And I was like, okay, <laughs> never again. <laughs> and yes, so that is for my background. And then um, a race. So now my favorite race actually is Sierzinal. Um, but a dream race, um, I want to go to the Olympics in, mar uh, in the marathon distance um, in Paris or maybe Los Angeles. Um, so let's see. I don't know if I can do it, but I think I, I want to try. So now I have to finish the studies for two years. And after that, maybe I will focus just like for two years for training and see if I can make it. Fingers crossed, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you can do it. Um, Stefan is asking, uh, do you also train uh, on mountain trails when dark? I'm asking because it's, it's tricky because of the obstacles. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Like um, trail running, I'm just doing it uh, in summer. <laughs> and in the dark, no, because I really, <laughs> I don't see anything when it's dark. <laughs> it's terrible for me, like even just like, by the lake sometimes I'm like oh my god what is happening to me um but no so no tra trail running in in winter um but I also like it because then I'm really looking forward to it in summer and I can stay focused and I'm really motivated to go again up to a mountain and the same like now for the flat trainings after my season in some uh, my season uh, in the mountains, I love to come back on the flat and to run by the lake, to go on the track. So I like to do both, but with a transition between both. Yeah. 
And the last one, Saba. How did COVID change your training? I think it's a great opportunity to make a good use of not being distracted by racism, actually focus completely on ourselves. Good. Yeah, so what changed um, was not really the training because most of the time when I just have easy footings, I go alone. And there are just like two sessions I'm doing with the group. Um, so during COVID, what was awesome is that my coach could come. So he came like at least once a week because he's living in the German part of Switzerland. And so we can, we could build like a new relationship and now we are much closer. So when you have a coach, we really like to talk to him every day. So like we are calling every day. He wants to know how I'm feeling, uh, how the training way went. I'm saying, I'm sending him my times. And that is something that really changed. The other thing is that I didn't have studies because I, we had like internship, but they were all canceled because of COVID. So I just had the training. So I could train like a really like elite athlete for two months. So I really saw what it was when you can recover after training, when you just like, when you have just one thing to focus on. And I just liked it, it was awesome. And I did like my best times because I had no distraction at all. Um, and that's what I liked. And I just went with one or two friends for the sessions and we, because we weren't allowed like to train with the group. So that was like the only thing that changed really during the trainings. And even now, like we are not meeting like a group of 10 people, but like yesterday we were like, three or four and we had like train together so you meet like the same teammates every time so okay sometimes I want to see other people but I mean it's fine and I'm happy that I can run that the track is open and that I go outside so I think I cannot complain with that. Cool, thank you. I know some people have to run. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, no more questions, right? If there's any last questions, do raise your hand or give a shout. Cool, well, thank you so much, Simone, um, for the wonderful talk. I think we've had some really great questions from a lot of friends, people to be runners in this, in this talk. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. This is actually the last event uh, for us this year. Um, so we'll be back uh, back on your Instagram grids on, in January when we'll, we'll, we'll have our next event. So hope everyone has a really good holiday season. Um, thank you so much for joining our virtual events. I see there's a lot of regular faces. So yes, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, have a good rest of the rest of the day and a great weekend. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.